Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I want to talk about a listener epiphany. Someone wrote in about another show that they listened to, another episode of the Anxiety Coaches podcast, and they had an epiphany about feeling safe in the present moment. And I wanted to share this with you because when I get to share your words with the whole listening family, I think it makes a big impact. So I love when you send me what has been a big change for you from listening to a particular episode or what is going on for you in a question form, and then I can answer that on the show. But today I did want to share this wonderful email that I got. So I'll just jump right in and read the email. Hi, Gina. I had the most beautiful epiphany after listening to your Sunday show. Thank you. And thank you to your listener who sent it in. Long story short, I'm 73 and my husband is 83. Last year, he was sick and in hospital and recovery for 39 days. He did recover, thank God. Over the last year, I have had so much anxiety. Will he fall? Will we downsize? Will I be able to handle being alone? What will my future be like at this age? My epiphany is, there is nothing wrong with me. I do not have anxiety. My thoughts do. Looking back, I did handle everything I had to do. Everything with three explanation points. My anxiety now has nothing to do with who I am in this moment. In this moment, I am safe. I am always safe in this moment. It is all looking ahead and backwards. I hope I expressed myself well enough. I am so happy and am going to practice what I have learned on Sunday's show. Thank you, Gina. You are so helpful in so many ways. I hope you realize how much you mean to us. Best always to you, A. I want to thank you, A, for writing because I get you. I totally get you. It is so wonderful when the light bulb goes off like that. Or as you said it, A, the epiphany. It is incredible. Like the fact that you got it when you heard something I was saying really warms my heart. But I know there was a lot of preparation in the ground of your mind before that epiphany happened. So before I go any further, I want to remind everybody the show that she is talking about is episode 961, From Random to Recognizable, Discovering the Roots of Anxiety. So if you haven't listened to that yet, you can check that one out. I'll also have a link to it in the show notes to make it convenient for you. But it's beautiful to see that someone out there was listening and had a significant realization after listening to that show. And again, that show was me reading a listener's question or someone that I had had a conversation with about anxiety that sent me an email. And so It's your words. And when I get to share your words with everybody listening, I think it's a different level. 
Like I said, I have been out of the wormhole for a long time. And of course, I remember it well. It's not something that we tend to forget. And I love sharing with you all of the tools that I have learned, all the tools that I have learned about since I came out of the wormhole, and the things that have helped my clients and group members. But I also know that you all have so much wisdom. I say this in our group coaching calls all the time. The group is so wise that just being together and sharing thoughts can be eye-opening. It's like turning the lights on. And so your words are very important to me. So just as a final reminder, if you want to send me your thoughts, your questions, you can send it to anxietycoachespodcast at gmail.com. So let's see what was going on here with our listener. She had even stated her age, which was interesting. And I thank you for doing that because the age matters. I am in my late 60s, and I know that my mind is in a different place now than it was even just 10 years ago. So the fact that the writer shared her age at being 73 and grappling with anxiety over various concerns related to her 83-year-old husband's illness and all of the potential things that could come up and the prospect of being alone and what the future holds for them at that age. This is a whole different chapter that we go through. We get older and things are different. We have fewer years ahead of us than we have behind us, and it changes our perspective. And I am thrilled to see that our listener is no longer going to be looking at it through the lens of fear. Because her epiphany is about the fact that there's nothing inherently wrong with her. The anxiety that she's been feeling doesn't reflect who she is in the present moment. That is huge and very well stated. Instead, her anxiety is linked to her thoughts about the past and the future. She's come to the realization that she is safe in the present moment and that her anxiety is primarily connected to thoughts, again, about the past and the future because she is feeling safe in the present moment. And I also appreciate that she had gratitude toward me. That was very kind and it warms my heart and it keeps me doing what I'm doing. You know, mindfulness meditation can be a powerful technique to teach us how to focus on this present moment. Now, we didn't get that information from our listener today, but that kind of focus on purpose, when we're observing our thoughts and our feelings without judging them, helps us to become more aware of the anxiety. And we learn how at that time in that practice where we're doing it on purpose, we learn to detach from it. And so I want to ask all of you out there, are you doing that even for five minutes a day? Just practicing, practicing being with your mind, observing the thoughts and the feelings without judgment as they arise and then being detached from them. That's what it means to not be judgmental of them, because you're detached from them. You are seeing them. You are the observer. I hope that you are practicing that, even if it's just for short periods of time, meaning five minutes a day. Now, I know it's hard to add another thing in. I just started adding in a new breathing kind of rhythm for another health thing that I'm kind of dealing with. And this was very specific and all these studies had been done on it. I'll share it with you in another show sometime. My point is I can see I need to do it five minutes a day and I can see how hard it is to make sure that I got that in because it's one more extra thing. So with 
the mindfulness meditation, I'm wondering if you can couple it with something else so that you don't forget it. Maybe it's as you get out of bed in the morning or as you lay down in the bed at night. That's a perfect place to add it on to. You know, the breathing, I mentioned a a new breathing exercise I'm working on, but breathing exercise in and of themselves can help to calm the nervous system. And trying techniques, whatever ones work for you, I just like you basically to remember to have that longer, slower exhale and breathing through your nose as best you can. I know some people have nasal issues and of course, breathe however you need to. But again, breathing exercises, whether they be part of your meditation time or just having that knowledge that when you feel you're ramping up, your heart rate starting to go up, you're getting your own cues of your anxiety and fear that you start that longer, slower exhale. And eventually that can become your new default, that you exhale longer and slower in any event where something triggering arises. As soon as you recognize that you are safe, that you will drop down into that longer, slower exhale. I know I say it a lot and people who've been listening to the show for a long time are probably like, oh my God, I can't believe she's saying this again. The reason I say it, it is so basic and so important that if you don't do it, it's putting the cart before the horse. You really have to put yourself in a good state physiologically as often as you can. So breathing exercises can really get you there. But so can things like progressive muscle relaxation. You know, there's places where we tense and then relax the muscle groups in our body. I have the body scan on the website that you can do, but there are also other ones that you can listen to. And they're guided. It's like a mini guided meditation. I think mine is 10 minutes long. And you just go through it in your mind as you focus on each part of your body. It takes you out of the anxious thinking because you're focusing your mind somewhere else. But you are also feeling those muscles and progressive muscle relaxation is tensing them and then relaxing each muscle group in your body because it helps you to release tension and become more aware of your body where in the present moment. All of these things are just guiding you back to this present moment. And that's where our listener realized in this moment I am safe. She could actually see that she could let go of the future thinking and the past rumination and feel the safety of the moment. And again, progressive muscle relaxation can help you get there. Now, I don't know any of you who maybe read this book back in the day, I know it's still available. I think they just did a revised edition of it. But Dr. Herbert Benson wrote The Relaxation Response. I think he wrote it back in 1975. And that was around the time that I was way, way, way down the anxious wormhole. And I finally stumbled on it around the mid 80s, I think because it wasn't brand new when when I got a hold of it. And I say this to you because what I want you to see is that seeds were planted. I didn't read just one book, and then I was suddenly taking leaps and bounds out of the anxious wormhole. Not even close. It took many books, many conversations, tapes. Yes, I am that old. Cassette tapes and journaling. I was a prolific journal writer. And all of that informed me on the direction I was to keep going in, to heal, to get better, to notice, was this working or was that working? How am I feeling today? Seeing where those 
threads are, where things, when I have done something over and over and again, did it help or did it not help? And some things that I worked on made little difference at all. I will say that. That's why it took me so long. There was no internet, no Google. I lived in a little tiny town with a small private community library. It wasn't even a public library in the county or state system. So some of the things that I stumbled on made very little difference, but I tried because I was just willing to get myself out of there however I could. And some things made a huge difference, but the reality is they all kept me moving forward. So again, I hope that you are doing things that can keep moving you forward. Are you journaling? Are you writing down your thoughts and feelings? Because this can help you to identify the patterns, like I was saying earlier, the common threads of anxious thinking and gain a better understanding of your fears. It also provides a really safe space to express and process your emotions. Now, one of the things I'll say about journal writing is now mine were in books and I kept them for years and then eventually I got rid of them. But I want to say this, not everybody is comfortable writing things down in a book that could be found or read by somebody or shared. So you can do it on your phone. Perhaps you can open up a document on your phone that is password protected. Or here's another thing, because you know I love the idea of putting pen to paper. It really is magical. So write it down, scribble it, write it as much as you can. Write them down. Now, you may not go back ever and look at it again. You don't need to go back and find the threads. You will remember them as you're going forward if that is important for you. But here, if you want to just be expressing and processing the emotions with no need to have to go back and reread them, write it out and then rip it up or run it under water, crumple it up, burn it, shred it. That in and of itself is helpful. Many people tell me the act of getting rid of it, especially if it was filled with anxious thoughts, feelings, and emotions, feels wonderful to get rid of. So maybe you could try that. Don't forget your physical movement. You know I want you to be moving. Yoga, Tai Chi, Qigong, dance, walking, running, your gym routine, whatever it is, get your body moving because you then are connected with your body and you are connected with it when in the present moment, you can't connect with your body in the future and you can't connect with it in the past. Our body and our breath, it's like the gateway to the present moment. If you have to do things for yourself, such as limiting exposure to unnecessary stressors, We all have those things in our life that really trigger us. And if they're unnecessary, let them go. Clean house, get rid of it. Be sure to use positive affirmations and challenge your negative thought patterns. And remember the kind of thoughts like our listener had. Make your own, like I am safe in this moment, or I trust myself to handle whatever comes my way. Isn't that beautiful? I can't thank you enough, A, for writing in and sharing your epiphany with us. And I hope that the listeners today have been able to hear her message and take it on as your own. Remember, that learning to feel safe in the present moment is a skill that may take time to develop. Our listener didn't get it overnight. I don't know how many other shows she listens to or other podcasts or books or therapy or whatever, but all of that was preparing the ground and then the seeds are spread. It takes a lot So remember that it may take time for you to develop the skill of feeling safe in the present moment and be patient with yourself and practice these techniques consistently 
to build your sense of security and reduce your anxiety. We're human and we will experience fear and anxiety from time to time. But reconnecting with your intrinsic safety can help you weather life's storms without going down the wormhole of anxiety. I was so happy to be with you here today, and I'll be back before you know it. And now for today's quote. The relaxation response is a physical state of deep rest that changes the physical and emotional responses to stress and the opposite of the fight or flight response. And that's from Herbert Benson. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com. 